Hey, Mike Lake here. Uh, a little bit different to have me in the kitchen here doing a video. Normally I'm next door in the studio and you know we're talking about uh, breathing and articulation and tone, intonation, improvisation, all that stuff. But I thought it would be it would be good for me to do a little bit of a demonstration on something that I do on a daily basis to maintain my energy levels, my health, my vitality. Because if you don't have those things, no matter what you do on your instrument, you're not going to be at 100%. I think taking care of yourself so that you have the energy to play a musical instrument, which requires a lot of energy. I mean, trombone, certainly I've got, you know, your arm, you've got your breathing, your mouth, all that stuff. But no matter what instrument you do, if you don't have the energy, you're just not going to be at your best. And I want to talk about juicing because that's something that I think is very important to maintaining energy and health. Um, personally, I don't remember the last time I was sick. I don't get those, you know, end of the year, right now we're Christmas, and uh, you know, we, I'm not getting that end of the year sick, uh, cold type of thing. Now, I don't know if it's because of juicing. I don't know what it is. I exercise, I do other things, I eat well, but I do believe strongly in this, and I wanna share this with you. Now, there's a lot of videos on YouTube that talk about juicing, and I'm not going to go through a lot of the stuff they do. I'm going to show you how I juice, but more importantly, what I want to do is I want to give you some practical tips because juicing is a bit of an investment here in terms of equipment, in terms of time, in terms of having the vegetables around when you need them. So I wanna give you some tips so that if you do want to kind of go into this and see how it is, you'll start off on the best foot possible. I've got two machines here. There's two different types of juices I wanna talk about. I wanna start with this one, and this is a wheatgrass juicer. I am an advocate and have been for decades about juicing wheatgrass. And I know that Hollywood kind of portrays it as a cancer cure. It's something that only people with cancer drink. And I don't necessarily think that's the case. I am healthy and I do uh, juice my wheatgrass and think that it contributes to my overall health. Tons of vitamins, as you can see here, um, fiber. It's just, it, it, it is really kind of a superfood. So I have a juicer here that is different from my vegetable juicer. You don't need to, you can find juicers that do both. I just happen to acqu have acquired this one first, and this really doesn't work for vegetables. Um, what you're gonna see is the, the, uh, the grass goes in here and the, the waste comes out here. This is just too small to be doing all these other vegetables. So let me just give you a quick demonstration of how this works and um, there we go. So it's got a little rocker switch that goes backwards and forwards because sometimes what happens is you put the, 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 uh, the grass in there and it gets stuck and you go back and forth. It's not a big deal, but that's kind of the nature of juicing wheatgrass, which is why it has that kind of switch. So this is kind of a typical amount I'll put in. Now, I bought this at Whole Foods comes in a little plastic container and there you go the juice is coming out here the waste is coming out there uh, I used to buy flats because it's very fresh when you buy the flats but unfortunately I can't find them anymore so I buy the containers of wheatgrass now one of the things you got to look for is make sure it's really dark green because after a while it starts to look pale and even though I've been doing this for a long time and I like the taste of it, when, when the grass is past its prime and the juice starts to taste sour, I throw it out. I can't drink it like that. So as you can see, this grass is nice and green. I'm gonna put the second batch in here. See if that works well. You can see it going down there. Okay, so here's where I need to go backwards. Now forwards. There we go, that worked. Now I generally make about half an inch 
you're definitely not making a full glass of this stuff. It, it is an acquired taste, by the way. It's very strong. It's nothing like you've probably ever tasted. So even for me, I can't drink, you know, I can't drink a whole bunch of it. And, and I don't think you need to. It's expensive to do. You'd be going through, you'd be going through a whole container a day. And, and I don't think that makes a lot of sense. So as you can see, the, uh, the waste is coming out of here. I'm going to put this here to catch anything else. This is what I've got. It's great, nice and sweet. It's fresh. Hmm. Good stuff, good stuff. Okay, now let's talk about the vegetables. This is the juicer for the vegetables. Um, they're, they both work about the same way. If you look at this juicer, and I take the the uh, cap off of it, you'll see that it has an auger inside. This. And basically what's happening is the auger is squeezing the moisture, the liquids, out of the vegetables. Why do we do that? Well, because th these vegetables all have a lot of nutrition in them. They have vitamins and they have minerals and fiber and all sorts of good stuff for you. But if you're going to eat the equivalent vegetables, it's a lot. And even though most of my diet is raw vegetables, it's not just chowing into, you know, collard greens and kale and other stuff uh, like that. I prefer it juiced. And, and it just allows you to have a very compact amount of liquid. Now, the thing about juicing vegetables is vegetables have a shelf life. This is not like going to the grocery store and buying cans of food and prepackaged stuff that lasts in your pantry for a long time. This stuff is dying as we speak. So one of the things about juicing that requires you to do is go to the grocery store or your farmer's market or wherever you buy groceries and uh, buy this stuff frequently because you want to, keep, want to have fresh vegetables and not wilted vegetables um, so they retain their nutritional uh, uh, properties. So one thing you want to do is you got to make sure that juicing is easy for you. And one of the things is making sure that you have easy access to fresh vegetables. And if you live near a farmer's market, that's terrific. If you live near a grocery store with good produce, uh, you know, I have Whole Foods and Sprouts that I'm at probably every other day. That's beneficial too. So I have a wide variety of vegetables. I, uh, some people juice just one thing. I like to have uh, five or six things in my juice. I think that the variety helps. It's just kind of what I've come to, uh, come to do. So if I turn this, this uh, juicer on, um, usually I'm on the other side of it. Um, I always start with cucumber. Now, if you see this hole down here, that's not very big. And that's not gonna hold a cucumber or at least a normal cucumber. So what I do is I cut them in fours and I just put them like this. And these kind of juicers come with this to force it down the hole. Sometimes it requires more force than others. Some vegetables do. But as you can see, the juice is coming here and the waste is coming out of there. So I'm gonna put all four in here. All right, and there's the last piece. So cucumber is always my staple. Cucumber is super rich in vitamins and all the good stuff. So no matter what, I would recommend cucumber juice. If all you do is cucumber juice, you're good. Now, I've got, um, I, I put a little ginger in it too, because ginger has a nice, a nice flavor to it. You don't do much. You do about this much, and I do peel it, put it down here, let that crunch away, and you get a little bit of juice. Now I'm gonna put more veggies in it. It'll wash some of the, some of the, uh, the juice uh, back into here, but you don't want a whole lot because it is a very pungent taste, but I think it's a, it's a nice thing to have. The second thing I put in is celery. High water content, you can see some, some good nutrients. Now the high water content is nice 
because some of these vegetables I'm going to show you are a little bit bitter. And don't be turned off by that because, I, you know, I think it's part of the nutritional uh, complex of them. Um, but they are a little bit bitter, so you want to have high water content, kind of a neutral vegetable to kind of water that down. And speaking of which, I have dandelion greens. And even more so, I have red dandelion. I found these at Whole Foods yesterday. Now, I'm a big believer in colored vegetables. The brighter the color, the better I like it. Okay, I just think it has antioxidant uh, uh, properties to it. So this uh, is very dense in nutrients. And I don't use a lot. This would be probably all I'd use for this. Now this gets a little, well, maybe not. I was going to say challenging to put in the juicer, but it all came through. I don't have to do much. Next, chard. Here is red chard. I've got, I buy it rainbow chard. So this is the, uh, the yellow too. I'm just going to do the red because chard is a little bit bitter. And now you can see this is pretty big, right? How am I going to get this down the hole? Eh, you just kind of, it doesn't go willingly at the end. <laughs> you kind of have to uh, force your will on it. And as you can see, there's a lot of waste coming out of this stuff here. And some people eat it. Some people put it in salad. Some You can put it in here. I'm applying a little bit of force to get this in. Um, some people use it for compost. You know, I throw it out. I don't, I don't really... Uh, I, I juice this for a reason. I don't, I don't want that. The next vegetable, one of my all-time favorites, is collard greens. Now, this is a big guy, right, to get down there. But again, you just have to kind of force it down there. Collard greens high in uh, uh, calcium and uh, a bunch of other vitamins and minerals. I don't drink cow's milk, so I figure if I'm, eat, if I'm drinking um, collard greens on a daily basis, which I pretty much am, I'm gonna force it down there. I figure I'm getting the calcium I need. I think it's in a better form than cow's milk. There's, uh, some people would argue that cow's milk actually leaches calcium from the bones. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't, I won't get into that, but uh, I would, I definitely prefer uh, collard greens. So we got collard greens, chard, um, dandelion greens. Now here's another favorite, beets. So I talked about the bitterness. The beets and the carrots help counteract some of the bitterness. Now, I try and buy beets with the tops on because that's another leaf that I like to juice, right? A little crazy. If anything has a leaf, I use it. When I'm making my, uh, my, my meals and I have leftover spinach, I'll put the spinach in here, right? So there are my beets and you can kind of see the red coming out, extract from that. And then the beet itself, I will put in here. And typically, a beet this size, I'll put the whole thing in. I'm gonna cut it so it can fit in the hole. It's a little awkward uh, at this angle, but I think I can make it work. Cutting, that is. And then uh, shove it down. Carrots, again, sweet. Takes out some of the, the flavors of the, you know, the chard and the dandelion that you may not like. And you might be saying, well, why are you doing this if you don't like the taste of it? The fact is, when this is done, I do like it. I mean, I, I don't have the, the willpower to consume something on a daily basis that I don't like. I, I don't have that much discipline. So I have to figure out the recipe that makes this in a way where I like it and I'll drink it. So that is my, that's my daily routine right there for vegetables. Um, one thing I'll mention about machines. The one, the, another thing that will kill juicing for you is if the machine is hard to clean. So I, I have a centrifugal uh, juicer somewhere around here that I used to use. And basically the difference is it's super high speed and through centrifugal force, it, takes the, it, 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 it cuts up the vegetables and extracts the juice. It was a pain to clean. 
And I found myself kind of putting off juicing every couple of days because I just couldn't bear cleaning it. This, this is very simple to clean and I can clean this within about 45 seconds. I won't bore you with a demonstration of it, but, but in essence, all you're really doing is taking the cap off of it, taking this out and cleaning this and you're done. And literally I can do it in about 45 seconds. So I've got the waste, which I, like I said, I'll throw out. I've got the juice. Now this has a, this has a screen on the top of it and that's because there's foam that comes from the top of the, of the, uh, of the juice. You see that? And I will wash that away. And then what I'm left with is my container of juice. And like any good bartender, I got a full glass. Well, that's good. I can't really taste the ginger. Oh yeah, again, there it goes. It's subtle, but you know, you just buy, buy a normal thing of ginger about like this, that'll last you at least a week. So this demonstration is harder than my normal daily routine. Normally I'm, I'm in my, my juicing room, my, my laundry room that has my juicers set up. I got a routine. I will juice through the vegetables I need in about a minute. I'll clean and within two or three minutes I'm done and I'm drinking. This is, you know, for the video, it's a little bit, and I'm at the, the opposite side, but, um, Try this. Juicers are not expensive. Uh, they don't have to be. You can get a cheap juicer. You can get a wheatgrass juicer for under a hundred bucks. They have the, the mechanical kind that you just kind of uh, crank the auger. Um, you can get a vegetable juicer that's also not very expensive. This is an Omega and this is a kind of a top of the line. Well, it's a top of the line consumer juicer. You can get, you know, uh, they go for over a thousand dollars, but if, but those, those are commercial units. So, Find a juicer that's within your budget, especially if you're gonna try this and see if it works for you, if you can build up a routine. Now this is the juicer I have. Uh, I've been calling it a uh, auger juicer, but it's actually called a masticating juicer because it basically crushes the vegetable and extracts the juice that way. Um, it's more expensive, but I do think it's a better juicer and here's some of the reasons. Chief among them, by the way, is that it's easy to clean. I know myself, if this were difficult to clean like the centrifugal juicer that I showed earlier, I would be juicing less frequently. It's pretty easy to take apart and put back together and clean. I think that's all I have to say about juicing. So try it. Let me know what you think and if you have any questions about it. And I'd be very interested to see if within 30 days of trying this on a daily basis or so, if you notice a, a difference in your vitality and your energy. Good luck.